What's up YouTube, today I want to talk about a really cool new feature in Faceplant 2 called Remap. So I'm sure most of you know how I feel about Vitals mod Remap. It allows you to basically change the linear curve of values going in and out of a particular parameter. So this particular feature opens up the doors for so many different really awesome modulation ideas and all sorts of things from switches to crossfades to super macros to all sorts of things. I'm going to try and explain how the remaps work in this video and a couple of other things that I think make it a little bit cooler in Faceplant than in Vital, for example. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So most of these examples might not be very musical. Um, I'm going to try to just outline how the stuff actually works so that you guys can kind of wrap your head around it. Then I will maybe show you a couple of uh, musical examples. Okay, so let's, for example, just put in a LFO. And what I want to do is I want to change this to a ramp up. So as you can see, the LFO cycles through and a value is generated linearly from 0 to 100%. Right, so if we add in an oscillator over here, and then just for argument's sake, let's add the remap and let's get it to modulate the pitch of this oscillator. I think that's going to be the easiest way for you to, guys to actually hear exactly what's happening. So just by default, let's set this to modulate this remap. So you can see here with certain modulators in Phaseplant 2, they've added this new equals modulator. And that just makes things easier for parameters which you would most likely be just adding to 100%. So nine times out of 10, when you're adding something to a remap, it's gonna be at 100%. You can change that by right clicking it and adding an exact value if you do wanna change it. I'm telling you most of the time it's going to be at 100%. So it's pretty cool that they've kind of made three clicks into one click with this new equals modulator. So it's not only the remaps which have the equals modulators, uh, also the modulation sidechain. So for example, it would just be one click and now this would change the amount of modulation that's being sent to the remap. Do you see that? So anyway, I don't want that. That was just for uh, explanation of how the equals modulator system works. Um, so here what I want to do is I want to assign this to modulate the pitch upwards by, let's say, 24 semitones. So it's going to linearly, linearly rise by two octaves the same time uh, and the same kind of linearity based on this LFO because we've drawn in a linear shape. X, Y is equal. Okay, so as you can hear, what we're hearing is the exact pitch rise based on the linear shape of the LFO. We can bend that linearity by drawing in various different shapes over here on the remap. And that's the kind of magic of remaps. So for example, if I put this node right to the bottom over here, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be no pitch shift for half of the sweep. And then the rest of the half, it's gonna sweep that full two octaves. And you can, you know, you're not limited to doing this to pitch and you're not limited to using this shape. You can really go wild and do all sorts of weird shapes here. So what this does is it basically expands one LFO into various multiple different shapes. So for example, we have this one LFO, which is timing the pitch doing this wobble. So now we could potentially put in another parameter, let's say a filter that often works quite well, a high pass filter with a bit of Q that often works quite well with these types of squelchy sounds. Um, then what I want to do is I want to add another remap and I want to set this parameter to modulate the remap again. And then here we can draw in a different shape, something weird like this. And then let's set this to modulate the cutoff over here. So as this modulates linearly in time, it's going to modulate both of these shapes at the same speed from zero to one, but we're generating two different shapes. So this is handy in situations where you want two modulations, but you want them to be relevant and 
in the time. Uh, like for example, with a squelchy sound, you often want the pitch and the filter to be kind of locked to the same kind of time base, but you may want to ch change that time base um, over time. And that's where this is particularly handy because now we can change the speed of the LFO and you'll see that it times both of these remaps perfectly like two separate LFOs that are synced together. So the other really neat trick about the remap system in Faceplant as opposed to Vital is Vital kind of does the quantizing thing in a separate system. So all of the remaps is only for the modulation. Whereas in Faceplant, it's kind of a bit more modular. You can use the remaps for anything. For example, to remap this modulation of the pitch into a specific scale. And there's actually a bunch of scales built in here already. And these scales are divided into two folders based on how much modulation is being applied to the signal. So in this example, we've got 24 semitones. So we would choose a scale from the 24 semitones folder. If we were doing bipolar modulation or had 48, you know, 24 above, 24 below, then we, we would choose from this folder over here. So anyway, let's just go ahead and choose random scales over here and see how this fits what we're doing. Okay, so anyway, another really neat trick is we could potentially generate gates using a remap. So what I want to do here is I want to put in a another filter over here. And then what we can do is we can lower this cutoff quite a bit. And then I want to add another remap. I want to get this same LFO to modulate the remap. And then let's set this to modulate this cutoff 100%. And then instead of just a linear ramp like this, I want to open this up. Uh, another cool thing about this is we can zoom in really fine here to create like, you know, we could do microtonal stuff here as well, which is really, really cool. Um, obviously, it would take some time to get it all, you know, um, adjusted. But yeah, just the ability to zoom in on a separate window just makes this so much better for really fine tuning your sound design stuff. But anyway, let's add in some points and you can hold control to snap the points to the grid. And here what I want to do is draw in like a bunch of these kind of shark fin type patterns or gates, which we can then use as the LFO cycles through its phase, what's gonna happen is this is gonna repeat several times. You see that? That's essentially generating a gate pattern for this. So it does help to have these divisions timed by the amount of steps that you have in your scales. Yeah, I think that'll work because it's eight and 16. Let's just see. To get it like really really tight it'll actually help to put in a ramp here by the same amount of divisions so for example 16 but here in facebound we can actually it snaps to the halves so we can actually go like this put in an 8 over here and then we should be able to draw in a division of 16 something like this i'm confusing myself already <laughs> not a good sign in the early stages of a complex video to be confused anyway so if we put in a shape like this it's going to lock so did you hear sometimes it kind of slid between the notes
we can do is we can actually jump into this LFO. We can actually change this. It doesn't have to be linear steps. So we can change this to create our own melodies. And just random shapes here will always result in something that's going to be locked to the scale which we selected here. So minor, for example. So the cool thing is now I've started playing this and I realized that the track is in a different key. So now because each of the elements inside Snap Heap are kind of modular, each one has its own little preset manager, which is really, really cool. We can just go in and select the, the kind of preset, which is gonna be closest to the scale which we have in the track, which is Phrygian. So now the coolest thing is because this modulation is coming out of here, going into this and then being quantized, this over here, this parameter becomes what I call the note extent. So what that means is it's the amount of notes in the range which are allowed to be played. So the coolest thing about this is you kind of create a motion in the lead and it starts to develop a rhythm. And as you shift this higher and higher, what it does is it includes more higher notes in the scale within that melody. And it kind of becomes less rhythmic and more melodic as you shift this up. So it's a nice way of being able to morph like a melody or morph a lead line or something, but still retain a similar groove throughout. So it just starts to add slightly more notes and that kind of thing as you progress. Awesome, that should give you a nice rundown of what the remaps are, how to use them both technically and musically. Um, and just on a side note, I have actually done a video on kind of like five tips to maximize your macros. That video was kind of aimed at Vital. However, I did mention in that video that at that time, the upcoming release of Faceplant 2.0 would have the remaps and that most of the ideas that I talked about in the video would actually be applicable to Faceplant as well. So you should definitely go check out that video. I'm gonna try to post a link over here. Uh, in the top of the screen as well as in the description where you can go check that out. Um, I think that'll give you a nice way, uh, a nice kind of full understanding of not only the remap system, but how to use it in various different examples to transition into different parts of the track to create these kind of uh, morphing patches that go from like a lead into an atmosphere and all sorts of stuff like that, but also just how to make the most of your filters. Anyway, definitely go check out that video. I hope this video helped you out in terms of understanding how remaps work uh, just in general. And yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. So I'm not sure how many of you guys are aware of the little rant I had not so long ago about these kind of copyright issues and stuff that I've been having on my channel uh, where these labels are kind of unfairly claiming a lot of my videos. The downside of that whole saga is that when I have open claims on my channel, I'm much less likely to hit the recommended algorithm on YouTube. So I've noticed every time that I do get these claims that my numbers and stuff do drastically dwindle. So anyway, long story short, I would appreciate if you guys do share this amongst people that you feel uh, this information would help with. And yeah, like I said, I do appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you guys for watching my videos and supporting me and hitting that like button and hitting that subscribe button. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.